All right, let's talk Maurice Hooker against Virgil Ortiz Jr. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to go live and cover this fight live, but I couldn't. All right, but I did watch the fight. I wasn't home, but I was able to watch the fight. And I love the fight. The fight was everything that I thought it would be. Um, it was just almost just as good as the Jose Ramirez fight with Maurice Hooker. You know, it was a lot of differences in the game plan with Virgil Ortiz, which was very much expected. One thing I will say, I like the way that Hooker fought a rangy fight. He didn't, he wasn't that consistent with it, but he he did better than what I thought he was going to do. Now, and I'm not talking about as far as distance or where the fight was going to go, because I, I had Virgil Ortiz winning the fight by KO. At some point, I just knew he would probably get to Hooker. And I just trust his punch resistance a little bit more, you know. Um, he's younger. He's fresher. Um, he hasn't really been in any wars yet. And I, he likes to bring the fight. Like, I was on uh, Shout Out to Punch Drunk Box, and I was doing a live video. I know a lot of you guys seen it. And we were talking extensively about the fight. And the thing is, I knew... I didn't know how Virgil Ortiz was going to fight at a high level. Like, you know, I mean, he's fought some decent people up to this point. Solomon Orozco, um, Samuel Vargas. He fought some solid people. Hooker's definitely been in there with better fighters. Uh, but Ortiz don't fight to me like a guy that it doesn't have a chin. He's extremely aggressive. He loves to exchange. He loves being in the pocket and throwing those combinations to the body and up top and mixing it up. And he just doesn't strike me. He never struck me as a guy that had a chin. I mean, it was, it was a chinny fighter. You know, now fighters, certain fighters on a higher level can definitely expose that, especially the ones that have power. And Hooker does have some pop. But... I knew in this fight he was going to take the risk, and he did take the risk, and he did get hit a lot in this fight. You know, in other fights like against Samuel Vargas, we've seen him slipping and countering and stepping around Vargas, but he was doing that because of the level of an opponent Vargas was. And even though Vargas has been in the ring with a lot of good fighters, he lost to all of them pretty much, you know? But Ortiz Jr. wanted to set himself apart from those guys. And and in this fight, and in that fight, and in this fight as well, because Hooker has lost before, but he wanted to set himself apart and really go at him. And he performed well. You know, he passed the test. Hooker, on the other hand, did very well with his jab and keeping it. And he was winning the rounds where he was being very rangy. You know, I, I, was, I was tweeting about the fight as it was going on. And I felt like Chris Mannix, who was doing the unofficial scorecard, I really didn't agree with the scorecard. I um, can't remember every round, but I know the first round, I gave it to Ortiz because he was just doing the majority of the work in that round. I think the second round was kind of a swing round because I think Hooker was in control of 90% of the round. And then like the last 20 seconds, Ortiz just kind of like put it on him and rocked him with a few shots. So I could see people giving Ortiz that round based on what he did at the very end. But Hooker was in control of that whole round. He was fighting rangy fighting. He was keeping him on the end of his jab. It was where he had success. Then the third or fourth round, Hooker was really coming to his own and really keeping that jab out there and landing at will, you know, landing right hands, going to the body. He was landing all kinds of shots against Ortiz, who just kept coming forward. But Hooker was doing his thing. And then after that, I think that's when the momentum started going back into Ortiz's favor. And um, Hooker was still having his moments. But it seems like this is the thing about Hooker, man. Hooker is a good fighter. And he knows he he's taller. You know, this is a guy that was at 140 for a while. He's taller. He has a long reach. But the thing is, he can only go but so far with fighting that way. He has a warrior mindset, you know, and it, it was very funny, his comment at the end about him being a warrior and the crowd booing. He is a warrior, you know, and he likes to exchange. And I said this on Punch Drunks the other day. I said, yo, you can kind of get 
Hooker to fight your fight. And it happened in the Jose Ramirez fight too. Hooker likes to exchange. He likes to hook. I mean, that's his name, Hooker. He likes to sit in the pocket, exchange, throw hooks, throw bombs. The thing is, he doesn't have the greatest punch resistance and his chin is always up in the air. He doesn't know how to slip the shots and to block the shots like when he's in the middle of those exchange, you know? He doesn't know how to, like, he just goes straight in and he swings and his chin is just right there to get hit. And Ortiz was just always looking for those opportunities to get in to do that. The problem with Ortiz in this fight, and as I was tweeting, you know, follow me on Twitter at BoxAway10. The problem with Ortiz is that he didn't make much use of his jab. And I know he felt that he didn't have to, but if Hooker chose to stay disciplined and for a cautious fight and keep Ortiz on the end of his jab and only exchange at certain moments, and if he stuck that way with every single round, Ortiz would have been a little bit in trouble because the thing is when Ortiz was using his jab and he was using the jab in order to, you know, um, you know, just to get himself inside, it was working. You know, whenever he threw the jab, he landed the jab. And I was just saying on Twitter, like, yo, throw more jabs. Why is he not doing his jab? Where is his jab? His jab is a good jab. He has a good jab. You know, um, if you want to really close the gap, throw the jab and step in and then work behind it. But he was just more so like just coming in and trying to exchange and try to you know, step in and just exchange all the time. And I'm like, there was times where it worked and there was times that it wasn't because Hooker would move and just start popping that jab again. You know what I'm saying? He'd get out of range, start using that jab again. And Ortiz was just coming in with that tight guard, just just trying to get in like that way. And, um, you know, Hooker was doing a good job timing that uppercut at times. Um, he was doing good to the body a little bit, but he didn't go to the body nearly as much as Ortiz. I think when Ortiz really started going into the body, like maybe like the fifth round, that's when he really started stepping in and just attacking her body. And Hooker was just like, you just saw it. You know, he was trying to hide it, but Hooker was taking too many shots to the body. Um, and, you know, he didn't go down for him. You could tell that there were moments where like he was really badly hurt. He was just trying to mask it, you know. But um, great fight. Every round was action-packed. The fight was exactly what we all expected it and wanted it to be. Unfortunately, the knockout was a little weird because Ortiz get, did get a knock a knockdown the previous round and um, dropped Hunt, you know, Hooker, and uh, Hooker was able to survive that round because it was in the very end of the round. But following round, there was like an exchange and Hooker. Like as soon as he 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 didn't even get hit with a a a, a hard shot, he kind of just they were exchanging, and then he kind of just grabbed his arm and turned around and went down on his knees, and he was like wincing in pain and stuff like that, and then the ref looked down and he stopped the fight. So the knockout was legit. It's just that it wasn't like a real knockout. You know what I'm saying? Like he couldn't fight anymore. He couldn't continue anymore because he was holding his arm. And, you know, whatever injury he had, you know, had whatever, uh, it is what it is. But much, much respect. You know, we're not going to take any credit away from Ortiz because Ortiz was definitely in full control. Um, and Ortiz did his thing overall. Uh, now, some key notes that I made yesterday, you know, during the Twitter and everything. Ortiz has proven regardless of what you feel about hooker champion at 140 former champion at 140 um hasn't done much at 147 i still believe that ortiz is a legit top well like ranked welterweight like he's ranked up there this is not like the abney yulderum situation where I made a whole video kind of ranting about how I feel about the terrible ranking system with these sanctioning bodies. I think Ortiz is is, is legit. Um, obviously, he hasn't fought the very best yet at welterweight, but he just did beat a former champion at 140 and someone that's not past their prime. You know, I don't think Hooker is past it or anything like that. 
I think Hooker is still fresh. It's just Ortiz was the better fighter. And he won and he stopped him. And you look impressive doing it. Um, I don't think he can beat Spence or Crawford right now. Um, but that's not saying that he doesn't deserve to fight. That's just me giving a prediction. Like if they were to fight tomorrow, I would pick Spence, uh, Spence to beat Ortiz. Uh, I would pick Crawford to beat Ortiz as well. Ortiz wants the Crawford fight. Um, he's number one at the WBO, or I don't know how that's going to work with Sean Porter, you know, but you know, Bud wants the Pacquiao fight. Pacquiao's probably most likely to fight Mikey Garcia. So in my opinion, the way I see it, I would hope, but we know Bud and Spence is the fight that I want to see more than any other fight outside of unification or undisputed at heavyweight. That's the number one fight for me. But because that's not happening, I want to see Bud fight Porter if the Pacquiao fight can't happen. If he can't fight Porter, I would love to see him fight Ortiz or whoever else. You know, the winner of Taylor and Ramirez is also good. Um, all of these fights are good. Uh, again, I, I don't, it's not that I don't want to see him fight Ortiz. It's just that I still think there's a gap between Ortiz and Bud at this point. You know, he's worthy of the fight, you know, uh, but it's, I still think there's a gap there, you know, and I hope if they are to fight and if Bud is to win, um, hopefully it won't be a, a, a win where he destroys this kid and he's never going to be the same fighter, you know. Hopefully, it's not type of that that type of a fight if he is to lose against Bud, if he is to fight Bud. That's all I'm saying. But I still see that there's a gap between the two. Um, the thing is, with Hooker, Hooker used the jab and control the range at points in one certain rounds, whereas Bud, on the other hand, not only does he hit harder than Hooker, but he's much better at controlling the range and using and working behind his jab. And he chooses to fight certain fights, certain fighters, like when he fought Postal. When we see Bud fight a rangy fight and a defensive fight where he's moving his legs a lot and he's just keeping his jab out there and mixing his jabs up from to, from a power jab to, you know, a stiff jab to a, you know, just like a touching jab. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's going to keep moving it and keep popping that jab and, you know, he's going to be throwing it to the body He's going to be doing things that Hooker can't do. And he's going to be throwing power behind some of the shots that are landed that Hooker did land. Hooker did land a lot of shots. Coming from Bud, though, some of these shots are going to be shots that could have come from blind spots. You know what I'm saying? Now, I get what people were saying. Ortiz, if he were to attack Bud's ribs like the way he was doing against Hooker, Yes, he can possibly hurt, hurt Bud. I mean, the kid can punch for sure, you know. And if Bud gets in some of the exchanges that he got into with Cavalasquez, if he takes that same approach, then, yeah, he can possibly get hurt. It really depends on Bud. Bud is kind of crazy. So Bud likes to fight certain fighters and beat them in their own game. But if he takes the approach that he took against Victor Postal or a Felix Diaz, it could be a very, very, very long night for Ortiz. And I could see him getting dominated if he is to take that approach. And it's not going to be so easy taking, getting those shots to the body. Um, because Hooker is a guy that's standing right in front of you. He doesn't have the legs and the timing that Bud has. He just doesn't have the technique. He doesn't have the boxing brain, whatever you want to call it. He just, Hooker and Bud, is, they're... There are levels between the two of them. So, and you know, the thing is with Spence, you know, Spence, he, he fights differently from Bud. But one thing Spence has is he has an amazing jab, an amazing jab. And it's really hard to get by that. Bud is probably, I mean, Spence is probably better on the exchanges than Bud is, you know, but Spence can probably sit there and exchange and hit hard and go to the body more too. Or he can fight that outside fight and 
keep it rangy and work behind his jab like he did against Lamont Peterson. Two very dangerous opponents. But regardless of all that, I would love to see an Ortiz against... Um, I would love to see Ortiz against Danny Garcia. I know Danny's talking about moving on 54. We're not going to see that fight. You know, Danny Garcia would be great. Porter would be great. Ugas would be great. You know, um, you know, Avenition just won. I mean, for Hooker, too. Uh, Connor Ben would be great. Avenition would be great. Uh, these are all good fights. You know, all good fights. And, you know, Kavalasics is still out there. You know, he's still out there. Yes, he lost a butt, but he picked up a win since then. Um, he's still out there, and he's still another dangerous opponent, you know. Uh, one thing I'm looking the most forward to is now that we've seen Ortiz pass his test, I would love to see what Ennis is able to do against Lipinets. All right? That is... That would be if 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 Jaron Ennis is able to win that fight and look dominant doing it and stopping Lipinets, that would be an excellent look for him because Lipinets got is a little bit more proven at 147 than Hooker is. All right, so that would be even a more amazing, impressive look for Ennis, you know, and he's another fighter that you just don't know how good he is. I know how good he looks. Right now, against the level he's fighting, he looks incredible. You know, um, Ortiz and Ennis, to me, are both future champions. Uh, I think Ortiz can beat Thurman right now. You know, and I tweeted this last night. I think he can beat Thurman right now. Right now, Keith Thurman, he can beat Thurman. I'm not so sure about Porter. I'm not too sure about Danny Garcia or, or, or Dennis Ugas. Uh, I think these guys are tougher than Hooker. But I think he beats... Keith Thurman right now attacking Keith Thurman's body like that being that aggressive I would love to see that um if you know if that can fight think it can be made it probably wouldn't be made because Keith Thurman is kind of looking for another big fight without putting himself too much risk unless he's going to get paid big for it um all good fights but anyway um Hooker he's not done it's a loss but he has always gave us the Salcedo fight was good the, you know, the, the 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 Ortiz fight was good. The Ramirez fight was good. He's given us some good fights. So he's not done in Ortiz. We still got a lot of other options out there. If Bud or Spence or whoever it doesn't happen yet. We'll see. So I'm going to leave it at that, man. And I'll, 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 I'll chat with y'all on the next one, man. Peace.